Having a happy chef is a very important part of our, uh, 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 you know, whenever we come to a hotel, if we uh, get uh, food cooked by unhappy chefs, uh, I can tell you we'll be in serious trouble. And uh, we all heard the revenue managers talking about how important F&B revenue has become uh, to the hotel's uh, top line and bottom line uh, in a market where people are really spilling blood over rooms. You know? um, so we have a, you know, we have a commercial vested interest and a personal vested interest in having happy chefs. But happy chefs also need good kitchens to work with. And that's where the problem starts because uh, uh, when the chefs ask, uh, give a kitchen design, the developer gets a mini heart attack you know, and the bands start rattling. You know, so <laughs> so uh, in that context, uh, I would, uh, you know, uh, Chef Gil being the senior most uh, member of the panel and having seen more kitchens than all of us put together, uh, you know, Chef Gil, what, do you, what is your idea of a happy kitchen? Name? First, I must tell you that uh, chefs are the very happy people. <laughs> and I, whenever. Well, I, I think the kitchens have seen whenever, some unhappy chefs. Anybody <laughs> asks me what's happening, I, what's cooking, I always say happiness. <laughs> so, food creates happiness. So, we are very happy people, whichever environment we are cooking. Now, there are some challenges in the planning of the kitchens or to create kitchens which, you know, yeah, there are some challenges in planning the kitchen. Uh, incidentally, you know, whatever it is, the planning of the kitchen is always, you know, adjusted with the infrastructure or the civil structure available. And then as uh, the first pair fit is becoming very expensive day by day, you know, and when you get a particular area or maybe 5,000, 6,000, whatever, square feet area for this particular outlet, uh, always it is good also to give the more area to the revenue making area than to, to the kitchen to produce the food. Now, so the more revenue, more it means that the area in the hotels day by day in the kitchen is reducing. So it means that we need to now be very, very precise and mathematically absolutely correct when we go to the drying board to plan the kitchen. So when there is a little bit of, you know, the kitchen is like, you know, the, it has to be a productive kitchen with the minimum energy, efficient, with the very efficient cost, less energy, and the less people to work. It should be highly productive kitchen and must produce the food with the best of the hygiene, sanitation, and food safety norms. The food must be produced. Food must be produced with a high level of consistency, and at the end, the delivery system should be efficient from the kitchen and at the end, happy customer with profitability. That's yes. what we are looking for. Chef, so I think you've set the tone actually for the discussion, you know, and uh, I wonder if Manisha, if we can start from your end, you know, can you tell me one uh, major, um, you know, innovation that has happened in kitchens say, in the last two years, three years, maybe five years, you know, uh, which have changed the life of chefs and made it uh, easier in some way or the other. I mean, uh, also in terms of productivity, what has made a difference to the productivity of chefs? So if you, if you look at any uh, equipment per se, I mean, there are lots of equipment which have come in the last 10 years mm. on the, uh, in the kitchen scenario. Uh, but as a chef, of course, our focus is always on productivity, faster, ability to not to compromise in the food quality. Right. So if you're looking at any one equipment which has come forward I would think is a combi oven which has given the chefs the flexibility of holding food at a certain temperature and that's always a challenge. The temperature of food is a big challenge. The product that comes out is a big challenge. So that is one thing which is that technology has helped us. I think for now even tandoori, uh, like tandoori dishes are made, uh, you know, uh, the, some, some hotels are experimenting with doing it in, in combi ovens. Have you done it? It is say whether it tandoor, it can replicate the tandoori effect. Right. That will be very difficult. I don't think that will be possible. Yeah. 100 percent there, but yes, common combi ovens are good to cook and hold. Right. Uh, other chefs can also throw some light on that. Another thing that comes to my mind is also the food safety part. Mm -hmm. So a lot of uh, good refrigeration equipment has come in the market of late, mm -hmm. which is also happening to see because uh, that is one thing which always plays on our mind all the time. Right. So right. these are two things which have been a big So Chef Bali, you know, you've, you've worked 
in uh, the kitchen that we are told now, you are an instructor at CLD. Um, so, uh, what, I mean, what is the big change that you found in kitchens which have made a difference? Eh? Uh, I think uh, also um, before I joined kitchens, yeah. I am actually a one year engineer. Wow. I got my engineering from Regional Engineering right. College uh, and then chose hotels. Um, I would look at this from a different perspective. And I would say that, you know, like taking on from Chef Gale who says, mm -hmm. I mean, chefs are always happy. Let's look at it at a different perspective mm -hmm. to say, how can chefs make engineers happy? Um, right. And uh, coming from that, because there are a lot of processes which have changed over a period of time in, <clears throat> in cooking. And an engineer's interaction to the food, most of them, I think, is uh, is based on what their wives cook and what they see at homes where a refrigerator is somewhere else and a wife is cooking somewhere else and the food is cooked fresh every day and it gets over by the meal period. Yeah. So I think for an engineer to think that kind of process what happens in the kitchen on a busy day when you are cooking for 2000 people and how the processes are segregated. Uh, and in my career I have never had a chief engineer work in my kitchen as an induction for one week to understand that nitty-gritties and issues that can arise in the kitchen. You should, you should invite the chief engineers for yes. lunches yes. and dinners today. So I would love them to, you know, if they would work in the kitchen, I think they will see from a very process-oriented yes. stuff. We are very creative people. Yes. Um, we are also process-oriented. Yes. But for us, creativity takes the first lead. And for engineer, it's a, it's a process. Yes. So then probably they'll help us in the kitchen when they see us operating, they might tell us that, Chef, these are my observations, you could do this better. A mm -hmm. um, lot of um, equipments have changed over the period of time. Um, most of us think that probably cooking is on a, on a gas range, but taken away from that, now you have sous vide cooking, where in one big thing, you can put a sous vide cook and you can put your multiple dishes, veg and non-veg, sealed in a plastic bag and they're cooking overnight at a slow uh, uh, temperature. So I, I think, of course, a chef and an engineer can really work hand in hand. Right. Um, and, uh, and, and both of us will. No, I think, I think what a very interesting point, which I have not made here, many chefs working, they're working together with chefs and engineers, you know. And now the big challenge is, uh, you know, saving on HLP, you know, heat, light, and power, you know, so that, that is the buzzword of the industry, you know, everyone wants to save that 10%, you know. It bothers them endless, you know. Uh, so, you know, um, and, and, and you know, coming to you, you know, what, uh, you know, you, you represent the new generation of uh, chefs who have taken on leadership positions. You know? Now, um, one of the concerns of this generation is, uh, your generation is, has always been sustainability, you know. Uh, and uh, what are you doing uh, at your kitchen as, as a chef in your kitchen or as a community, you know? How, what have you done to uh, make this uh, saving of heat, light and power a reality? You know, sort of? uh, basically, it's a very important concern about uh, sustainability, uh, having sustainable food, which is uh, uh, one thing is how to uh, bring down the carbon footprint. So, uh, you buy, uh, for example, having small packets of uh, maybe conflicts or whatever, yes. uh, you can buy big bulk packages so right. you you uh, create i mean the, the funda behind sustainability is to reduce uh, recycle and reproduce uh, things use less of plastic for packaging for instance so, for instance. so, so basically there are uh, now biodegradable mm -hmm. packages uh, which we are using currently uh, cardboards are there polythenes are out uh, mm -hmm. so these are the things basically uh, we use it in the bakery mm -hmm. uh, to to help sustainability mm -hmm. uh, Going ahead with that, uh, I would say uh, uh, the, the machines which are available right now, uh, the refrigerator are more efficient. Uh, they are really con consumed, they come with now star ratings. So that, that's how uh, you again, uh, the more the star, the more saving it does. So that's how uh, you, uh, do you consume less energy and power in the, that section as well. Uh, reducing the wastage uh, is another thing which uh, we are talking about. Uh, so having a modern kitchen uh, helps a chef to work uh, happier, work uh, uh, in a better way, much efficient way, and that's how you reduce uh, wastage as well. 
so in, in that process, uh, knowingly and knowingly, we end up uh, uh, saving energy and and. Yeah, I, you know, I didn't tell you. Uh, Neither Sohail is the executive sous chef of the media ambience go down. And now, uh, Islam, uh, you know, um, is the CEO not of Lemon Tree Hotels, uh, you know? So, uh, just before you ask me my question, I, I think I'm the yeah. only non-chef on the panel. Yeah. I think one thing which has changed in, uh, in the last couple of years is live show kitchens. And, and, I, and I'm an F&B guy, and I always felt that uh, there is uh, a, the kitchen, the chefs are of a different breed, and service is, you know, another line, uh, across the line uh, uh, party. Uh, but I think what's happening today is that the kitchen team today has to be uh, smarter. They have to be interactive. Uh, they they got to they 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 sell themselves in an in a, in a, in a open kitchen. Uh, hygiene standards have to be outstanding now. Uh, earlier, you know, you could always hide behind a wall. So I think, uh, which gives also a great confidence to the customer that, you know, what is actually being cooked is cooked in front of him. Yeah. And, uh, and you really see it. Any uh, restaurant today which is opening up across India, they go live kitchens, live show kitchens. So I think that's the way forward. So therefore, the, 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 the personalities of the chefs uh, have to change now. Because they have to be able to communicate. They've got to be able to uh, demonstrate skills. Which no, what, what chef is saying, you want happy chefs, you know? Absolutely. Chefs. Because show that they're happy. Right? <laughs> but they, you're, you're, you're on show. Mm -hmm. Earlier they would be at the background and the service uh, would be actually on the show. But I think uh, th that's going to get uh, change, changing mm -hmm. in, the, in the future. Right, you know, um, interesting because you've raised a very interesting point, you know. Uh, I think um, a happy kitchen depends a lot on the front of the house also, you know. So the, the coordination, uh, you know, you talked about processes, you know. Uh, so, uh, uh, Rajesh, you know, uh, Rajesh is the executive chef of our host hotel. Uh, and he's also worked at uh, Uber for, uh, for, for, for quite some time, 12 years. Uh, so now, um, uh, Rajesh, uh, tell me, uh, what, how is the front of the house important to ensure that the kitchen uh, uh, works uh, you know, according to timeline, according to processes, as much as it is other way around? You know? Actually speaking, uh, the front of the house operation and back of the house operation, something which we've created a divide, hmm. actually. Okay, like what uh, was just mentioned now, we are as much front of the house as, much, as anybody else is. And we will be totally in front of the house. But uh, things haven't changed as far as processes are concerned because food has to be cooked, it has to be put onto a plate, it has to go to the table. So that has not changed. Like we say, the way the operations have been no, kind of uh, streamlined now, I would say streamlined. Mm. It's more modernized. You've got a little bit more scientific way of approaching things. You've got better equipments today. So the space required to operate a kitchen for, let's say, a 2000 car banqueting would be half of what it was required before. Because you need a lot of place to hold things. Mm. So, front of the house, if you have a great team, okay, it's nothing like it. Mm. And the back of the house also has to be great. So this divide, so-called, which exists, like it was just mentioned, you know, we cook and somebody else serves. Right. Well, we cook and serve, and they also serve and cook too. So that's 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 the way I look at it. I mean, it's it's one thing right now. And for me, the most important thing is the engineering aspect, because if they're not there, we're not there. Yeah. I can't cook it with just with my hands. So uh, I hope the engineers are listening. Right? Uh, they haven't uh, gone back to uh, gone back to have tea or something, but uh, um, you know, I think this concern is coming back. Uh, like you know, no, it's not a concern. Actually, what what I'm trying to say is that it has to be a cohesive effort from you know cost cutting in the sense HLP cost to uh, making the productivity of the area you know pristine and hygiene everything. And I mean, they all go hand in glove. It can't be that you know you do one thing and you don't do the other. Mm. It's a chain and it has to be there. Mm. If that doesn't work, then whatever you're talking about today will, you know, just fall by the wayside somewhere down the line. I would just agree with you, Adam, that uh, Leela, uh, like for example, uh, the FMD revenue was very, uh, the room's revenue will be a share 50 50 percent. Mm. So quite high. So nowadays, I think you have to give importance that kitchen is also at work. Uh, if you look at it, the trends, uh, we are no more cooking. It's it's a place of socialization as well. Mm. Uh, we have been having a lot of uh, tea breaks in the bakery mm. or inside the 
a kitchen. Yeah, so, yeah. It's so very hard that I think you will be part of it as well with one, one of those uh, breaks. Mm. So uh, the guests are moving inside mm. to the kitchen and we are organizing that. So it has to be well planned. So uh, cooking, storage, prep, uh, the three corners of the triangle. And that needs to be really designed well. Mm. And that's engineer which actually is behind, behind mm. all this. So chefs are successful only when you do these things right. So um, uh, Chef Gil, uh, you have you know, I used the number of, uh, count to the number of restaurants you have launched, you know, so can you give the number, what is uh, the number of restaurants? I have also never counted. Uh, at least 40, you know. He said, but tell you, I have a very specific question, and then, you know, uh, like kitchens, you know. See, when you started, uh, uh, I think 78, 77, 78? 74. Oh, 74, so, okay, 74, sorry. <laughs> now, um, when you started, what is the average uh, size of a kitchen in a five-star hotel, like, uh, say, at the time of Shok or at the other one? And what is it now? And why, uh, you know, this field that is uh, the product is doubled and reduced? Like, like I said before, you know, the, no doubt that before kitchens were quite large. And, uh, like, when I started at my, in the, in Obro, I the kitchen ferry, and the uh, kitchen was a very fantastic kitchen. And uh, I will not say that that was an old and outdated kitchen that was as good as today's kitchens are, even now. But the only thing is, with the today's, as I said before, that one square feet area is very expensive, kitchens are becoming smaller. Because we have to logically give more area to the revenue making area. So now kitchens need to be very smartly designed, very, it has to be highly productive. And that's what the difference is coming. But if we come back to this topic, you know, my only little concern is that uh, with the engineer, I don't know how many engineers sitting here or, or the, or you can carry the message for them if you are uh, on organizations. Uh, somewhere when the, the engineers are very qualified people, they are structurally trained in the engineering point of view. But sometimes, you know, when they come in the kitchen, they don't talk in engineer language. They don't give us the engineering solution. You know, they talk to the chefs, all that is hot. That means nothing to the chef. The engineer has to say the oven is at 180 degree. It will reach to 190 degree in 30 seconds. That was the language the engineer has to speak. But unfortunately, engineer doesn't know this language. They understand the science, but they don't understand the culinary science. And with particularly the hotel engineers, at least in every chain or every company, one engineer must be there that who can understand the culinary science these are the, the, the equipment. This is very, very important and this is where all hotels or the industry is lacking. And we must see that, you know, just an example, like in every profession, the doctors are not made the medical equipment. Doctors don't maintain the medical equipment. This is done by the engineers. The carpenters are using the equipment of all kinds of tools are made by the engineers, not by the carpenters. But in India, incidentally, overall, even to like we produce, whatever you say, but we produce almost about 95 percent Indian food production in the India. Five percent covers the rest all the niche market of international food. But we have nothing support from the engineers to make our food, our food more uh, better to productive, productive and consistent to supply and so on, get the tools made mm. with engineering inputs in that, which makes the life easy of the chefs. That's only I think that's, that's that's the that we are lacking into our industry. I think we have this call for any, any questions uh, from the audience, you know, because uh, I think uh, we have had a very, very interesting point on, uh, you know, it doesn't, uh, you know, someone from an engineering, uh, can someone give an engineering perspective, you know? The engineers are all, there is one, you know, the Italian gentleman who sort of got every engineer excited and having a little meeting there. Uh, but, uh, you know, anyone uh, has questions, you know, interesting uh, ideas have come up, you know. Bikram Ji, you know, why don't you do the honors, you know? Okay, we will, uh, I, I just wanted to find out, uh, 
uh, are the trainees now happier than you were when you were trainees? A. And B, uh, uh, also when you are training chefs, I, is, has the training changed? Because chefs have to be, as you said, more social. You can't be grumpy and you can't scream at people and I'm sure there was a lot of screaming. And after women came into the kitchen, language improved. Now the chefs are out in the open after they've been trained by the women to speak in a clean language. The language of love is the same. No, 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 we had two role models who came in the kitchen and ran away to leave the kitchen and become escapists and join some other area, mm. left the kitchen. We people struggled in the kitchen, worked in the kitchen and made the kitchen in such a way that the new training feel it's like a heaven. And new training you ask anybody. People are very, very happy. Inputs are totally different. And for the language is concerned, language is Definitely, it's a language which commonly spoken in, not in front of the guests, in the hotel there are two languages. Yeah. In the kitchen you speak what you feel, you speak as your nature. In the morning meeting also you are a Outside the kitchen you are artificially speaking, you have artificial smile, you compromise a lot with your own nature. So you can be different. But what happens in the show kitchen? In the, in the show kitchen, the chefs don't have to behave the way anybody else behaves in the front. Yeah. 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 So has training changed from what it used to be? Because now there is a huge element of socialization also which obviously keeps chefs happier because they can interact and talk about what they are doing and they get the immediate guest satisfaction on them which are important parts. So has that been reflected yeah, on the... Yeah. We should be to use all across India. And my assessment is that there are certain unique personalities and education level that people come in with. You can't educate anything, everything in a training program. You know, that's very good. You, you, you can teach him how to cook, but you can't teach him many other things. You can't teach him English, you can't tell him how to walk, stop. You know, you know there's, a, there's a line in which this... And I think the quality of people who are coming in the kitchen, and that's what Chef is trying to say, I think the quality of people who are coming into the kitchen profession are far superior than what were coming earlier. And therefore, these guys are both socially and skill set far superior than earlier. So the training that you require is lesser than what was required uh, earlier. I think earlier when, when people chose uh, uh, chefing as a profession, I think it was cooking as a profession and not chef as a profession. Because I think uh, most of us really faced a flag from our family when we said we wanted to join hotels. And there were all sorts of things coming, Bartan Manjo Ge, Kapoor Ho Ge. And uh, I remember when I started my training, and uh, I'm from Kashmir, so when I had to go back, and I was in that May 2021, I actually would say I'm doing management and I'm doing all this and all that, just to, you know, uh, for them to feel that I'm doing something good in life. But today, the things have changed, and I go back to them and I say, really, I cook in a kitchen. And today they don't believe me. They say, no, no, you must be lying. But that is what still the conservative part is. So today, I think the people who are choosing to become chefs, they you know, a class 12 student is following a Heston Blumenthal book on a TLC. They are watching all the cooking shows. Perpetually sitting here, they have travelled around the world to see what ingredients are available in Thailand, in Brazil. They know about the foods of China. So their understanding of a subject is far more, uh, uh, you know, from a chef's perspective to say, a, a chef is one who can speak well, a chef is one who is learning different languages, a chef is one who is going out and interacting with the guests. Mm. And I think all these things are one, one thing is that from us we teach and second is inspired. I mean, when we are role models do that, they also feel inspired by that. And uh, I think that's how it's going. But I think the discussion is the only way is that maybe one final question. One final question. We will come back to the kitchen. We will have a discussion on chefs training later. Uh, you know, um, if we uh, sort of uh, 
Is it uh, uh, thoughts on this one? Sorry, didn't get your... Uh, any thoughts on this one? Uh, like any technology you'd like to see that the chef talking about this infrared, uh, you know, uh, uh, the yeah. the program, you know? I don't know uh, when it will come to India, but uh, I was just uh, watching this video in one of the food uh, seminars. <coughs> It's a company called, I think, uh, Fulton, uh, from, uh, the Fulton Innovations. They are coming with uh, radio uh, frequency uh, tail tops. So this is kind of a, a, a tail top clean you can wash it with. Uh, that has hub, hubs underneath which you can see. So if you put a blender, it, it starts working without a wire. Yeah. Or, or you put a pan, it starts heating. The same tail top. So you can multi-purpose. You can eat. You can wash, you can play cards, you can uh, put drinks on that as a bar, or you can use all these cooking techniques. Yeah. So that, that, that is uh, pretty, pretty much nice, and I think uh, we look forward to see such technologies coming over. Yes, it's going as well. Science fiction of the kitchen is going to be no wires as such, so uh, the best, uh, I think the most irritating thing is the wires coming over there. Cleaning becomes an issue. Uh, handling them is, is an issue, so, so I think that, that would be a good technology which we would look forward for. Interesting. So then, so then, so I, I think I'm coming from a different perspective. Uh, we, I represent uh, middle and upscale hotels. Uh, we cannot afford all this, you know, because um, our, our, our project costs are much lower. And therefore, uh, for example, I, we're just building a new hotel in uh, sector 29, and I was doing a design and kitchen there. I mean, getting a designer from outside who actually designs a kitchen costs multi lakhs. It's very, very expensive. Then he comes with, with ideas which I can't afford because he says, get this technology, design this, cut customer design, but at least customer is not to add the size of that kitchen. It is so goddamn expensive that it's, uh, you know, I, 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 we have to cut over the project and do it our way, which mm -hmm. didn't come out the, the right way. I mean, mm -hmm. I wanted 100%. But then the reality is that everything must be price sensitive. And because if you really look at it, 50% uh, of hotels which have been built now in India are all coming in the mid and upscale category. Five stars are, are slowly reducing. And therefore, I think uh, engineering must keep that in mind that they have to get to our to segment. I think, yeah, I mean, because I think every, uh, all kitchens are planned with the five star hotel in mind as of now. No? Yes. Um, so, um, there is also in some vertical kitchens and you know, so the, you know, the, 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 Horizontally expensive kitchens. Rajesh, uh, um, so whatever we do, whatever we do, we need to keep in mind the work ergonomics, which is very important. And today, with you know with the economics of scale going and the commercials being an important aspect, whatever we decide, we, you know, it has to be in such a way that it a small area can cater to a large number. Mm -hmm. and that is important. And that is where the engineering team along with the kitchen team. And like you said, the ex, you know, there's no end to what amount of money you can spend to build a kitchen. Someone would spend a few crores, somebody can only spend a few lakhs. But in that amount, what best you can do. And that's where the kitchen team and the engineering team, you know, play a role together. Rather than saying that, oh, I wish I could. And we could all wish for you know the <laughs> sky, <laughs> but unfortunately we don't. Yeah, but we need to work within our budget, so make sure that it is effective. And that's what it is at the end of the day. If we are effective, we are happy then. Great, I mean, it's, a, it's a subject uh, which uh, I think, uh, I mean, I was quite apprehensive when we selected the subject, but I think we have touched upon a topic which can be like a topic for a full blown seminar, you know, the planning of a kitchen. Uh, requires so many uh, technical inputs that uh, I think uh, there is a scope for engineers and chefs talking together across the table. So maybe we'll have a BW Hotel Concrete <laughs> dedicated to the subject. Uh, thank you very much.